Orgon is a 2D action platformer from developer Big Blue Bubble, releasing on the Epic Game Store and all major consoles. Well, I fought my way through the city of Caligan and vacuumed up enough loot to make a dragon blush. So is this one worth the price tag? I don't know. Let's find out. So before I start with the review, I'd like to say that I received a key for this game from the developer, which is actually a first for me. So thank you for the validation that I have become the big boy reviewer I always wanted to be. And with that out of the way, let's talk about the game. You play as an Arbiter, which is a kind of super soldier developed by Caligan's best and brightest right before they completely donk stuff up and just about end the entire world. No. Once, something stay dead? Now your job is to travel back through the city to clean up a number of failed projects and stop something called the Harrow, which is capable of corrupting living beings and turn them into the strongest, buffest versions of themselves. But honestly, the story in Forgone is a bit forgettable. It does that thing where a lot of the lore is put into logs which can be found around the levels, but considering that there are less than like 10 of these total, you aren't going to leave the game with a full picture of the world the game's taking place in, but more of a very fuzzy version of the redemption arc our main character goes through. Kill the Herald One. Oh, doom us all. What? In my opinion though, the story isn't going to be the main attraction for a lot of people. It's going to be that fast-paced, loot-filled gameplay. So the combat works like this. You've got a melee weapon and a ranged weapon, and each ranged weapon has a certain amount of ammo which can be replenished by slapping dudes with your melee attacks. There are a number of different weapon categories for both melee and range, which can slightly change your playstyle. All it's going to come down to preference as they don't actually make almost any difference. As an example, on the range side you can have a pistol which is a single shot ranged weapon with a lot of bullets, or maybe you want to use a shotgun which has less ammo, but a generally higher DPS. Although considering the game uses auto lock on and has absolutely no damage fall off as far as I can tell, it's really not going to matter what you end up using for either slot. I think it's a big shortcoming because these really are mostly just visual things. With a slower attack you're going to get less hits in before you either have to move or get whopped, but everything feels so balanced that you'll do about the same amount of damage as with a faster attacking weapon. Aside from just attacking, you also have a dodge move which allows you to move through enemies while also giving you some of those hot iframes that I live for. This means that most encounters boil down to going in guns blazing and then dodging behind whoever's left and spam left click him into the next life. Although surprisingly the combat still ended up being really fun and addicting, mostly in part to three different things. The first being the explosion of loot which comes with killing enemies. I mean upon death they drop gold, health, blue crystals, or sometimes equipable items of varying rarity. But man just the way they drop and fly around is so satisfying and really never gets old. And the next thing is a constant addition of new enemy types. I mean at first you're going to find yourself going against the simpletons of Caligan who run right at you in a hopeless attempt to hit you, but soon you'll be fighting with guys who use AoE attacks, who can teleport, who use shields, or even dudes who just started eating one day and then never stopped. And this variety is really important when looking at the final thing that makes the combat so good. And that's that the world of Foregone isn't procedurally generated like a certain other game this one clearly takes inspiration from. So each level and encounter is purposefully crafted which leads to a lot of great fights where you have to quickly figure out what enemies you're going to be dealing with and in what order you should kill them to have the best chance to get out of this one alive. And there are real stakes for dying, because if you do happen to die, all that gold and the sweet blue crystals you've been collecting are going to be dropped right where it happened, and you'll need to fight your way back to reclaim them. But if you die again, then they're gone. And to understand why that should be a problem, let's take a look at the character and item progression systems. So there's an outpost which you discover extremely early in the game which acts as your main base. Although the only things you can actually do here are teleporting to another waypoint in the world and upgrading your character stats by spending blue crystals or upgrading your items by spending gold. There's a pretty alright sized progression tree which gives you permanent stat boosts like increased damage or improved status effects like health leeching and with each point you put in the next one increases in cost meaning you'll need to start saving up your crystals to get the last few points. This game also does this totally weird thing by giving you three progression nodes with two branches each but in order to unlock a branch you need to use an artifact essentially locking you out of the other branch. So make sure you really think about your build before you make your choice. And then from the same dude you can also upgrade your active abilities which you naturally gain while progressing through the campaign. And these have the same restriction of only being able to select one branch to go down. Although I thought the whole tree felt a bit weird with a lot of branches and nodes being placed seemingly at random. And now moving on to item progression there's a few things to keep in mind. So like other loot based games each item in Foregone has a certain rarity which determines the number of extra modifiers which are on the item. Grey gives you none while the end game red gear gives you 4 with a chance for a 5th. And every rarity also has a limit on the number of times it can be upgraded by the blacksmith for gold. Each upgrade increases its stat modifiers and power along with whatever its base stat is. From here you can also salvage any items which you don't need any longer for gold versus destroying them out in the world for nothing. And now that we understand what the cost of dying is, it's time to drop some bad news. So as the game goes on and you've been upgrading this lady, you're going to start noticing that you're constantly carrying around a huge amount of each currency. And it should be stressful but also exciting at the same time going into every new area worrying about making the mistake that'll end your dumb life. 
but that feeling is pretty much missing because Foregone is weirdly easy from start to finish. Obviously as it goes on there are more enemies to combat with, but throughout the game you're also unlocking new mobility abilities which allow you to maneuver around these guys and make them look like absolute fools. The game already heavily favors you just in terms of level design because it's platform based. If you're fighting someone that's not going well, you can easily dodge, dash, or jump away, or literally drop off that platform back into safety. And given that one of the first active abilities you get is a heal, which like all other active abilities recharges through attacks, you just aren't going to be in much danger. That is even considering the health leeching that you can spec into, so there's so many escape options, it's actually very hard to die. But also you're going to be getting better and better at the game, so you'll be able to easily dodge around the different attacks while picking these guys off without even needing to consider the need for an escape. It reminds me a bit of Doom Eternal, in that once you get into the flow of the combat, you start flying around completely destroying everything. It's not going to matter how many scumbags get thrown at you, and if anyone happens to teleport into your area, then they just made the gravest error of their lives. In fact, I think I died less than 10 times total during my playthrough, and only 2 of those deaths were outside of a boss encounter. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, because the combat is super fun, but I do think the game could have been quite a bit harder and been better for it. And I also have another problem with the core system in this game, which is its looting. So while playing you'll be getting loot drops and upgrades, but as I said these won't be changing your playstyle in any large way. So what's exciting about getting new and better loot? Well in Foregone there really isn't anything very exciting about it beyond watching it drop and then picking it up and seeing bigger numbers, but only in the menus. And since the game world is perfectly linear, the enemies scale up along with you and the gear they drop reflects that. So even though you're seeing better and better gear and larger numbers, it feels like your time to kill is about the same the entire game. I never felt a surge of power after getting new gear that tapered off as enemies got harder, it just always felt perfectly linear and unremarkable. I really think this could have been helped if the world was structured differently. It already has metroidvania like elements with secret areas being locked until you get new abilities, but there's no reason to go back to these areas except to find the secrets. There's no backtracking or branching paths. There's really no exploration of any sort. Just about every path is a critical path and you're always moving forward. It'd be really cool to have areas that are clearly harder than others that you actually need to gear up for in order to tackle. Because if you don't have that, then the gear score and all the numbers are essentially just fluff. Even something as simple as adding floating damage numbers during the combat would have gone a long way in actually showing you that you're at all stronger than when you first woke up in the forest with some stiff ass legs and a dinky ass sword. The good news though is that once you complete the 4.5 hour long campaign, you'll be able to play on New Game Plus keeping your abilities, upgrades, and items while making the enemies tougher, and it's really great. But the thing is, if your gear system only really starts affecting the speed of your progress in your second playthrough, there's clearly a flaw somewhere. And that's about it for the gameplay, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the bosses in this game. They're overall really fun breaks from the normal levels, and require you have command over all the mobility options that you've unlocked up to that point. They all have very clearly telegraphed attacks which punish you hard if you don't pay attention. And I'll see, I think these are all really great. But another thing I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention, is the absolutely terrible decision to teleport you back to the outpost on death instead of the previous waypoint you passed. It literally doesn't even make sense. I just passed the waypoint on the way into the boss arena, why would I ever want to be sent back to the outpost just have to teleport back to the boss's waypoint? It's such a waste of time, and then considering that some bosses have unskippable cutscenes at the start of their fight, it can be super frustrating to die and then have to spend another minute just waiting around till you can make your next attempt. And the last thing I wanted to talk about, which maybe impressed me the most, is the art direction in Foregone. I'm not sure if anyone knows this about me, but I'm a bit of a fan of pixel art, and wow, does this game just look amazing. They use the old 3D to 2D method with a lot of assets, but some of the pixel art backgrounds are just incredible. Every area is so unique, but also everything is so cohesive. And even though we've seen this style, I don't know, maybe in a certain other game, it doesn't stop it from being visually impressive in its own right. So overall I'm a bit more mixed on Foregone than I thought I'd be. It's hard because the gameplay is really fun, and I'd absolutely say the vast majority of my time spent with it was positive, but the core systems which are supposed to make this game unique just don't add enough to prove that they're anything more than just a fun little distraction. Now to me the first part about enjoying the game is much more important than the second. If this game was in the $10 to $15 range, I'd say it's worth picking up, but this is going for $25. And now just looking at how much content there is in the game, I just don't think there's enough to justify the purchase. Clearly it's meant to be played multiple times on New Game Plus to pad out the experience, but with no leveling system or countless builds to try out, there just isn't going to be much keeping you going after the first. So for my final score, I'm going to go and give this one an incredibly unconvincing disguise. Would you like to see 